everyone how are you all i hope you all are good doing very well so students today we are going to start that new chapter and the chapter name is where does food come from uh don't you think that that is going to be a very interesting chapter for us like we are going to study about like from where the food is coming exactly because we know this thing that the food is one of the essential thing for living beings i'm not talking about only human beings because <laughs> animals and plants they also require food exactly because if food is not there so that means we are not getting energy to do anything so that's how student food is important for each and every one and in this chapter we are going to see that from where the food is come and how like like if i talk about this particular session that what we are going to study so we are going to study about different different type of organism we are having okay so we'll see that part that how it is going to start now but starting with the session so i would like to introduce myself so my name is arushi sharma and i'm going to teach you this chapter that is if where does food come from okay so starting with the chapter and we'll see that uh, what are the topics we are going to cover today so students you can see here that we are going to see these topics that is the grouping of organisms on basis of their food habit like how their food habits are there like whether they are producing their own food or they or the uh, organisms depending on the another organisms for their food so that's how we are going to see the types of organisms like on the basis of their food habits okay so that is the autotrophs and heterotrophs then we'll see scavengers and decomposers i hope you have heard about decomposers scavengers that if you know that the decomposers if we talk about decomposers like earthworm if you have heard this thing that the earthworm are the friends of farmers why <laughs> because what happens student that the like if i give you very brief about it like a very small thing i want to tell you here that they break down the substances and because of that na somewhere the fertility of the soil increases and farmers what they require they require the fertility of the soil that it should be increased hai na and it's like that if someone not exactly human beings but if, if someone is increasing that fertility without costing anything so it would be a great great help for them that is why the earthworm kind of decomposer they are you can say friends of farmers okay because we know this thing that friends do something for us and they'll not charge anything okay like money or something like that so everyone knows well so now students we are going to see these topics here and then we'll see that the specialization of teeth according to food habit we'll discuss about this thing that how it is the teeth uh, like what's the specialization of the teeth means okay so don't worry uh, you'll come to know what uh, like about that in this session only then we are going to see about the food chain and the food web okay then we'll see apiculture so these are the topic students which we are going to cover up in today's session so before starting so just one question is here now what the question is saying <laughs> that why tiger has long and sharp canine teeth like you you have noticed one thing like the tigers they are having that big sharp teeth and like they are very sharp like in this kind of if i am not wrong exactly kind of nail or something like that you can say so why they are having that type of teeth so students if you notice that i have shown you that the topics which we are going to cover up in today's class so these are the topics which contains the specialization of the teeth up depending upon the food habit so you will be getting the answer of the same question in the same session only okay so just starting with the topics so i just want to make some kind of uh, curiosity in your mind like why the tigers are having that type of teeth why don't we are having that type of teeth so just see it so starting with the very first topic of today's class it's about grouping of organisms on basis of their food habits okay students so if you notice one thing like in our surroundings if we talk about living beings so living beings are it's not like that that student we are having two main main category if you see one is plants and another one is the animals now you'll say ma'am animals like animals we talk about dog cat or something like that so where the human beings are see student it's a very basic thing like you can consider human beings even the very small small organisms like microorganism and like big animals if we talk about elephant lion so we all are coming under the category of animals only it's just that we are different different type 
of animals so don't worry about that but the plants are we know that plants are we are having in our surroundings okay and then we are having animals now how we have divided them on the basis of their food habits fine students so these are the division but how we are dividing them so we'll see that part how see students if you notice one thing that we have uh, two types of things uh, that is the autotrophs and heterotrophs okay so plants are those type of living organisms students if you notice that plants produce food for themselves and for us as well like for animals for human beings so they are producing the food so that's how we call them as producer because they are producing food for us so we call them as producer fine now if you see animals have you ever seen that any animal uh, producing food yes we cook food for us for like by us by our hand only but if we see that we are not producing anything even though when we are doing cropping farming or something like that so it's the plants which are producing food yes we are doing agriculture process but we are not producing anything so that's how student plants are the producers and the animals are the consumers we are consumers fine now we'll see that what type of animals like how many types of animals are there depending upon their food habits so we are having three one is herbivores second carnivores and third omnivores so like carnivores herbivores omnivores so what are they like what we can say about them so student yes very first thing which we have to be clear here that the plants are the producers that means they are producing food for us consumers who are consuming that food which is produced by the plants okay in any way it's not like that in a very particular way in any way so that are the consumers now those consumers has been divided into three categories now what are these three categories herbivores carnivores and omnivores and i hope like you have heard about these terms like from the very starting only so the herbivores are those type of uh, organism students those survive on plants like uh, they just are having the habit to eat this food material which comes from the plant like cereals rice or even the plants only green grasses so that we called as herbivores but if we talk about carnivores so carnivores are those type of animal students who depend upon the another animal like how they are depending on the another animal because they are used to eat flesh and blood so that's how they are getting that flesh and blood from the other animals so the any organism which depends upon the other organism for for their food like the flesh and blood so that we called as the carnivores now we are having so see like if i'll say generally so we can say one thing that the herbivores are kind of vegetarian and the carnivores are kind of non vegetarian okay we will say ma'am you are differentiating between uh, vegetarian and non vegetarian it's not like that students i am not saying that thing but we i'm just clearing the concept that herbivores which depends upon the plants product for their food survival and the carnivores depends upon the flesh and but uh, blood for their food survival okay now if we talk about omnivores omnivores are those type of uh, organism student you can say that they are having both options like they can go for vegetarian and they can also go for non vegetarian that means student you can say human beings can also be the example of omnivores how because some of the human beings they like eating dal exactly they like eating roti they like eating um rice and other things which are vegetarian in nature but they but the, as well as they like eating chicken or we can say other non vegetarian stuff as well so such organisms which are habitual of both type of taste like vegetarian and non vegetarian that means they can eat plant product as well as the animal uh, animal product like the flesh and not exactly flesh and blood we are eating like we human beings we are not eating exactly that but we cook it properly and then we consume it so we are depending upon the animals as well so that's how students such organisms which are having the habitual of both type of uh, uh, circumstances so we call them as omnivores that means students we can say that the uh, a kind of organisms which are herbivores and carnivores in nature both of the categories so we call them as omnivores okay so depending upon these food habits student we have divided these organism here okay now the very first thing student like uh, if you notice the question which uh, i have asked you that why the tigers are having that sharp and canine teeth so that's how student you can relate here like before starting that topic you will be getting some answer here if you notice that uh, tiger tiger what what he did like for what their habit about their food 
so they they are uh, requiring some flesh and blood of any other animal exactly so if they are requiring that flesh and blood of any other animal student so they are what they are carnivores and if they are carnivore student so we know this thing that the carnivores require such type of teeth so that they can easily tear out the skin of the another animal because by hand or by simple kind of teeth we can't tear it so that's how they require these type of teeth fine so we'll be having some more uh, like explanation more detail about these things but right now maybe you are getting that answer of question okay so now we have seen that on depending upon the food habit we are having two type of organisms one is the plants and the another one is the animals and we have seen here that the plants are the producers and the animals are the consumers and then animals has been divided here that it's the herbivores carnivores and omnivores okay now moving ahead so students we are going to discuss about autotrophs now what are the autotrophs so students if i'll say auto means self okay that the we can see that the type of organisms which can produce their own food like they are not depending upon any other animal or any other organisms for the production of their food so such type of uh, organisms we call them as autotrophs fine yes exactly student autotrophs are those type of you can say organisms which depends upon the sunlight okay so for the whole process if you have heard about photosynthesis process so in photosynthesis process student what happened that we generally like if we talk about in a very simple language about the photosynthesis so it is a process by which the plants produce make their food their food and as well as the food for animals so that is the photosynthesis process so for the photosynthesis process student they require sunlight sunlight water exactly but it's that they are not depending upon any other organism so that's how student autotrophs are those type of organisms which can produce their own food fine so that means we can say plants are the examples of autotrophs plants and we can also say like we can also consider them as the producers okay i hope you got the point about like what are exactly autotrophs is okay now coming to the heterotrophs now what are the heterotrophs so hetero means like not self so we can say different or other uh, exact word we can use here it is other okay so the heterotrophs are those type of organisms which depends upon the other organisms for their food that who like uh, the uh, like the organisms which can produce their own food like we human beings animals so such type of uh, organisms are called as the heterotrophs they depend upon the autotrophs for their survival see students if you say directly indirectly like the can you say ma'am carnivores are those type of animals which do not eat any plant products so how they are depending upon the plant exactly see student but the thing is that that directly or indirectly if we see so the every animal or every type of animal whether it is carnivore omnivore or herbivore so they are depending upon the plants only how so we'll see that part in food chain and food web so don't worry about it but the heterotrophs are those type of organisms which cannot produce their own food they require any other organism to make their food for their survival that's why student if you noticed we have called them consumers because we just consume okay so that is the uh, thing students about autotrophs and the heterotrophs fine fine i hope you got the point about autotrophs and heterotrophs now uh, like uh, as i have told you like how if we talk about carnivores so they are depending upon the plants or not see students like just take a very simple example here here it is a tiger let's say it's a whole jungle jungle that means we can say forest hmm. and in that forest we are having one river chalo now here it is a river fine just imagine like we are just imagining one situation here is the tiger and here one what we can say deer deer or goat <laughs> you'll say mom uh, like in forest we generally find out wild animals okay but no problem god can also be there na and see student god is a type of animal which depends upon the plants they just eat green grass or plants or something like that so they are herbivores in nature fine students so now the god is and uh, like uh, uh, near the river now tiger is there 
now he is observing that god is there now he he was like he is feeling some kind of hungry and it's like uh, he is having water in his mouth similarly like whenever we see our uh, our favorite food so we are having water in our mouth exactly so that the same thing is happen here so now tiger comes near to this god and consume god okay but how like you will say ma'am why you are explaining this thing right now here so see student if god is a type of herbivore so that means they are taking plants for their food survival if the plants are not there and if the plants are not there so definitely god will be not there and gods are not there herbivores are not there so definitely tigers can't survive so similarly students if you see that the tigers or if we say carnivores or omnivores so we are directly or indirectly depending upon the plants only so that's a student plants because like you can say that the plants are now the major one like which produce food or you can say which act as a food for other animals as well fine so that's a student whether we we talk about the animals like uh, uh, carnivores or omnivores so we are directly or indirectly depending upon the plants only okay so that's why student whole category of the animals are considered as the consumers and the plants are considered as the producers okay fine now coming to the different type of animals so these are the type of animals which we called as scavengers now what are the scavengers students so uh, see students okay we have talked about herbivores carnivores omnivores now there is one particular type of animals that we called as scavengers now what are the scavengers students so scavengers are those type of animals which consume dead organism that have died because of any other cause then the predation okay see student what happened that okay we have uh, like hunting hunting was a very common thing uh, like not nowadays because hunting is banned uh, if we see in some of the areas and uh, so i don't know exactly so it's just that student so if any other animal like uh, because of any other cause like because of any illness or disease if that animal died so what happened these type of animals that they consume over those dead organism and those type of animals which are consuming the dead organism like they are uh, they like the flesh and blood uh, flesh and blood blood of that uh, dead organism so we call them as the scavengers fine so you can see here students like the scavengers examples are vultures vultures can be the examples of it so you can see here students that these are the kind of scavengers and they are consuming over this dead organism and you can see that from the skeleton part only like if you observe so it is a kind of the skeleton of a an animal which is big in size exactly it's not a type of animal which is very small or something like that so if you see from the skeleton side so you can imagine that the size of that animal is somewhat big so they are uh, they are feeding over that dead organism because they are used to it so the organism or the type of the animals which depends upon the flesh and blood of the dead organism or which or you can say which consume the flesh and blood of the dead organism that we called as the scavengers fine students okay now coming to the another type of organism so these are the decomposers so decomposers are very small in size like even though if you see by uh, with your naked eye so you are not able to observe them exactly because they are very small now what are the decomposers so these are the organic nutrients that break down the dead or decaying organism how see they consume dead plants and animals and decompose them reduces the uh, like reduces them to the simpler form of matter how see student like that the, generally these decomposers are present in soil generally if we talk about like a, a decomposition process we can consider here okay so what they do to uh, what they do students like the organic matter organic matter students we can considered as dead plants and animals okay dead plants and animals let's say these dead plants and animals are present in soil so these decomposer students what they do they do the decomposition process in that decomposition process what happened that they break down the big organic matter into the simpler form 
simpler form and because of that student this simpler form get mixed with the soil and that's how student we like you can say that uh, they are reducing the size of that organic matter fine so the type of the organism which break down the dead or decaying organisms which are organic in nature to produce them or to uh, or to reduce them to the simpler form of matter that we called as the decomposers fine even the students what you can do you can do one uh, activity at your home what uh, you can collect some vegetable peels okay vegetable peels and what you can do like there if there is a soil in that soil you can make one pit okay in that pit student what you can do you can put these vegetable peels and then cover that pit fine after some time students like if i say after one uh, not exactly one day two three four like i'll give you okay one week like take one week for that okay after one week student if you open that pit again you will be finding that the proper vegetable peels which you have uh, put uh, in that pit so they are not present in exact form they are like you can say that they are converting into the very small small particles so how they are getting converting into that form because of the decomposers present in the soil because like see student that the vegetable peels are not of any use they are <laughs> naturally dead in nature exactly but they are organic in nature so that's a student decomposers decompose that vegetable peels and convert them into the simpler form that's how the decomposition process takes out and uh, these type of organisms are called as the decomposers fine so till now student we have studied about uh, exactly some type of organisms autotrophs which can produce their own food heterotrophs which which depends upon the other organisms for their food and then if we talk about scavengers so scavengers are also depending upon the other animals but it just that they just consume the flesh and blood of the dead organism now if we talk about decomposers so decomposers are those type of organisms which break down the dead or decaying part or decaying organisms or we can say that the organic matter into the simpler forms fine so that's the whole thing about the type of organisms now moving ahead here because we have discussed about the uh, organisms depending upon their food habit so now talking about the specialization of teeth like we can observe student that the different different animals are having different types of a uh, teeth exactly so why they are having that because of the food habit fine students if you see the herbivores herbivores they are generally having typical chisel like incisors large and flat premolars and molars for chewing plants while their canines are small their canines are small if you see that their canines are small now why they are having that canines small because student as you have noticed like we have discussed one of the question that the canines uh the tigers are having large canines because they have to tear out the skin of any other animal exactly but the herbivores we just like they just having the habit to chew plants and for that they don't require that large canine shape because of that student the canine shape of the herbivores are small fine so that's how student herbivores are having this type of teeth but now if you look at the teeth for the carnivores so you can see here student that this tiger i don't like i can't actually see that if it is a tiger or cheetah or whatever but it is a kind of carnivore animal only so you can see here student that uh, uh, okay just give me a second second so you can see here that the teeth it like so sharp and big you can see so sharp and big so why they are having because they have to tear the skin of any other animal and tearing of the skin of any other animal is not that much easy that by using hand they can do it no even though if you have noticed their nails they are also very sharp because they have to do that thing na, so that they can survive they can take their food so carnivores are those type of animals most carnivores have long sharp teeth adapted to ripping tearing or cutting flesh the most important teeth for Canine, uh, carnivores are their long sharp canine teeth if they are not having such type of teeth students so how they are going to tear other animal i can feel that that the tearing of other animal is not a good thing but what we can do every human being not only human being but every living organism has to survive and for their survival they require food so it's like that there is their habit na like they can't you they can't eat fire, uh, plants so that's how student carnivores are those type of animals which depends on other animals so that they can survive for their food and for that student they are having this type of teeth that which are very long and sharp in nature so that they can easily tear out the skin of the other animal and they can consume their flesh and blood blood sorry you will say ma'am why are you pronouncing 
announcing blood as always blood actually it happened sometimes with me so just ignore it now coming to the omnivores so you can see here student that in the uh, case of omnivores you can see that it is a buccal cavity it is a type of teeth that all human beings are having in general okay so you can see here students that we are that all of them are very much precisely arranged why because omnivores are those type of organisms if you remember that they are having the ability to eat any any organism like whether the plants or the other animals so that's how student omnivores are having such type of teeth and you can see here an omnivore is an animal that has the ability to eat and survive on both plant and animal matter so that's how we are, depending upon the food habit of different different organisms we are having different type of the teeth so students you can imagine na like how god has created us like <laughs> you'll say ma'am how do you know that god has created us because uh, i i don't know like whether uh, what's the theory behind it but see it's a very good thing na like if you observe one thing that okay omnivores are having these type of teeth carnivores are having large canine shape if we are not having such type of teeth so how we are going to survive exactly because we are not consuming food so we can't survive so that's how you can see student depending upon the condition we are having each and everything according to that okay so we have seen the specialization of the teeth and right now you will be having the answer of the very first question which we have started uh, which we have uh, asked uh, in the very starting of this session exactly okay now it's a very important topic now you will say ma'am why it is important because students this food chain and food web is going to be help you to your in your higher classes as well fine so till now we have started about the type of organism we have seen the specialization of the teeth but now we are going to look at the food chain and the food web so in a very simple uh, language if i want to tell you that what is food chain or a food web students so food chain just a second yeah yeah everything is fine actually i thought uh, that i have muted my mic and uh, but now everything is fine <laughs> so yeah so i was talking about food chain so food chain student that means food is transferring from one uh, like in a very simple language if we say from one organism to the another organism and when those food chain connected with each other and form a kind of network that we called as food web if you remember that this food web web okay that means network is there so food chain is a linear network of links and when you can see that the networks are con uh, like connecting together so we called it as the food web starting from the producer because if the producers are not there so how we are consuming them okay producers such as grass trees which use radiation from the sun to make their food exactly i have told you this thing that the plants require sunlight for their photosynthesis process and that's how student food chain starts from the producers like whether like if you talk about any food chain so they just start from the producer and ending at the apex predator apex predator that means after that you will be seeing that they are the uh, they are the last one to consume anything so that's how we'll see that part how it is apex predator especially like grizzly bears or killer whales so that's how student the food chain are. so for that we are going to see one video so don't worry about that so this is the food chain and now in this food chain if you observe one thing so this is a producer that means it is a plant and this plant consumes sunlight exactly sunlight so that they can produce food now this plant has been consumed by the herbivore type of animal and those herbivore type of animal which is consuming it for the very first time we call it as the primary consumer now this primary consumer that it is herbivores and herbivores in nature student so that has been consumed by the carnivores exactly now it is consuming the second one so that's why we call it as the secondary consumer now this secondary consumer when it died so either it can be consumed by the scavengers like as we have seen that the animals which has been died like without any predation or because of any other reason so the those that organisms are consumed by the scavengers so that's how student either they can consumed by the scavengers or they can just get decomposed in the soil so that's how student you can see that it is a kind of the food chain because when it is going to be break down by the uh, decomposer so that that is going to be mix up in the soil only and that is used up by the plant so that's how the whole process goes on and that 
that is how we call it as the food chain now when this net when this food chain is connected with another food chain so that means they are making a kind of network which we called as the food web fine so for that i'm going to show you one video here so just look at it So students, now we know this thing that every organ depends upon the food for their survival, but how we are getting it? So now you will see that it, we are going to see about the food chain and the food web. Okay, so just observe it very carefully. So if you uh, students, if you notice here that what is going on exactly is that the hair is a sun. The, the sunlight has been used up by the plants to produce their food. Exactly. Plants are growing up because sunlight is also uh, helping them to grow up. Exactly. So whether it is a grass or something like plant as there. So we can see here that these are the producers. Now this producer has been consumed by the grasshopper. So the very first time it is consumed by the grasshopper. So we are ca calling it as primary consumer. Now this primary consumer was consumed now consumed by the frog. So that means now it is called as the secondary consumer. So that's a student when the level is increasing. So we are increasing the time, like we are changing their name as well. The very first is called as the primary. The second one is calling as the secondary. Now when this frog is eaten up by the snake or, or snakes, so that's how it comes, uh, it uh, called as the tertiary consumer. Now this snake has been consumed by the, you can see her students, you can see here that it is uh, eaten up by the scavenger type of organs. So we call them as the quaternary consumer. So that's how students starting from the producers to the quaternary consumer. So this is a series of organisms which you can see here that which depends upon uh, the other organisms. So that's how a food chain formed. So we can see here. So students, a series of organisms that eat one another resulting in the flow of energy, like how the flow of energy is getting, uh, you can say, sun, sunlight is giving, the, giving its energy to the plants. Now the plants has been consumed by the grasshopper. So that's how student energy is transforming from one organism to the another organism. So when the series of the organisms is there and they are eating up, like you can see, you know, like they are eating one another and which results in the flow of energy from one organism to the another organism. So such we called as the food chain, fine. But it's just that on the different level, we call them as the different consumers. How? That the initially grasshopper is eating plants. So that's how we call them as primary consumer. Then the grasshopper has been eaten up by the frog. So that's how we're calling it as secondary consumer, depending upon it. Okay, so that is the food chain. See, student, it's not like that, that the one particular animal is a food of any other uh, animal. Okay, it could be possibility that one animal can be a food for any other two, two type of animals. Okay, so that's the, that's how we, we can also having one food chain. So you can see here. Thank you. 
so student because of that like the earthworm is eaten up by both of them like hen and frog and hen also eat grass so grass or you can say that grains so because of that student that uh, how the food chains are interconnecting with each other and i have already told you that when the food chain form a kind of network that we called it as the food web fine So uh, students, uh, like here we can see that the type of the consumer, like uh, the driving force is the sun. Now the plants are the producer because they are producing food. Worms, they are consuming the plants for the very first time. So they are the primary consumer. These primary consumers are consumed by the hen and frog. So they are the secondary consumer. And that's how student, you can see that the secondary and the tertiary type of consumers are there or the to the next level, we can say that a quaternary consumer depending upon the level. Okay, so that's how students series of organisms depending upon each other for their food survival for the flow of energy we call it as food chain and when the food chain gets interconnected with each other then we call it as the food web okay So student, if you notice here that hen is depending upon the both type of source, plant source as well, because grains come from where? Plants only. And the earthworm, they are the type of organism that we consider as the animal source. So the hen, you can consider here that it is a type of the organism which is depending upon the food energy of both type of source, like the plant source as well as the animal source. That's why we call them as the omnivores. Okay. So students in this food chain, if you notice here that the eagle is the, uh, you can say that the highest level, that means at that point, no any other organism is going to consume this eagle. Okay, so such type of consumers are called as the apex consumer or the predators. So consumers with few to no predators of their own residing at the top of their food chain that we called as the apex consumer. Fine students. Exactly. Decomposers. So student, it's like that different different food chains are there it's not like that only one type of food chain is that there are different type of many food chain are there but it just that it will be having the same kind of mechanism same kind of mechanism how you will say that ma'am how we are getting the same kind of mechanism so it's just that student the driving force will be sun that means sun is producing the sunlight and the sunlight is consuming by these plants so that they can produce food so the plants will be the producer in each and every food chain now the plants producing food or they are just eaten up by the herbivores kind of animal and those herbivores are eaten up by any other animal so that's how student the food chain is getting uh, interconnected with each other fine so that's how we are getting primary consumer secondary consumer tertiary consumer but at the very highest point of the food chain we are getting one type of organism that we called as the apex consumer because for them we are not having any other type of animal so that they can consume it but it's just that student what happened to those con apex consumer uh, so what happens student when those apex consumer died 
so those apex consumers are decomposed by the decomposers that means those decomposers decompose the dead part of that organism and convert that organic matter into the simpler form and that simpler form again mix up into the soil and that soil is used by the plants to grow exactly so that's how student the whole process goes on and that is how student when we see that the series of organisms depending on each other and they are transferring the energy from one uh, from one one organism to the another organism that is called as the food chain and when the food chain get interconnected with each other so we call it as the food web fine so i hope you got the idea like exactly what is the food chain and the food web so that's the whole point about food chain and food web now coming to the very last topic of our today's session that is the apiculture so now what is the apiculture so it is a scientific word which we use for the rearing of honey bees that means if we are rearing honey bees so what we are getting from them we are getting the honey so you can say student that the process for the extraction of honey so that we called as the apiculture the word apiculture comes from latin word apis meaning bee okay so that means bee culture or the rearing of the honey bees so that we can get honey from it and how we are getting it so we can see here so i'm going to show you this video so just to get it carefully so students you can see here that the honey is very important why it is important um because students like if you compare the amount of honey with the amount of the milk or the eggs so they are like if you say that the 200 gram of honey uh, having all, all all those of nutrients which is contained by the 1.5 m uh, like the 5.1.5 uh, sorry actually <laughs> sorry sorry for that so it's like 200 gram of honey is having all of those nutrients which is contained by the 1.5 liter of milk so that means student honey is having each and every type of nutrient that we are getting from the uh, food which is important for us so that's how honey is very important and how we are getting honey so we are getting it from the honey bees so honey bees are you can say that they are consuming the sweet part of the that you can say that the nectar part of the plant which is sweet in nature and that's how they produce use honey okay that means they are having all of the nutrients so student if you have noticed that always there is a group of bees that they don't <laughs> they they don't live separately they always live in a group that we called as the swarms how so see here so student that the artificial hives which was made by the people so that we can take the honey honey from them so that's how student those is the artificial hives are called as the apiary that's why we call it as the apiculture fine so how it is going on so students you can see here that honey consists of sugar mineral water and many enzymes which is very very important for our body that's why student honey is a you can say a healthy food source for us so student uh, if you have noticed that because of that apiculture that means we have to rear honey bees and for that we have to make what we have to make artificial hives because they require hives uh, for their survival because they uh, hives are the kind of the home for them 
exactly like we human beings are having homes so similarly honey bees are also having their home which we called as the hives but the artificial hives are called as the apiaries that is why we call uh, this process as apiculture and from that apiaries we collect that honey bee and if you have noticed that the honey bee is having lots of nutrients if you compare it with the milk meat eggs which all are a very important food source for us exactly so similarly student honey bees are having all of these things and even though enzymes which are present in honey that is good for the digestion of the food and they are also used as the antiseptic so that is how student honey is very important for, for us and we are getting it from the apiculture so this is all about apiculture fine so after that student we are going to discuss some of the questions here so name two sugar producing plants that which produce sugar so one is the sugar cane and one is the sugar beet exactly sugar cane we know that uh, even though we used to drink juice of sugar cane and i like it very much so that's the whole point <laughs> now what is honey why is its importance so obviously we have seen this thing that the honey is a mixture of what honey consists of what sugar minerals and enzymes and it's like that it is easily digestible and it is used in medicines as a an antiseptic which destroy the growth of microorganism a sweet substance liquid prepared by the bees from the nectar that is the sweet juice collected from flowers is called as honey so what is honey honey is a kind of the liquid substance which is prepared by the bees and how they are preparing it they are taking the nectar or the sweet juice part from the flowers and that honey consists of water sugar enzymes and minerals and that enzymes are used for the digestion process for our food exactly and the honey can also be used as a medicine in an antiseptic uh, as an antiseptic sorry so because they destroy the growth of organism microorganism fine now the question 3 comes here that define scavengers and parasites with examples so scavengers are what student if you remember easily that the scavengers are the type of organisms which are carnivores or omnivores on nature because they eat the dead animals okay they help in cleaning our surrounding because what happens student that if you notice one thing that the apex consumers are generally the scavengers only that means uh, if they are dying so there is no any other or, uh, like you can see here uh, see here student that uh, they are the highest pride like you can say that they have present at the highest level of the food chain so they help us to clean the surrounding fine how surrounding because for example if any lion died now how to like the even though that it can undergo the decomposition process but the decomposition of it will be a long process so to clean like to keep the surrounding clear is that we are having a pex consumer or we can say that the we are having scavengers because they survive only on the dead organism so that's how they are used up for the cleaning of our environment that is you can say some of the examples crow crow jackal and that's how we are having examples okay now we will look at the pa parasites so student parasites are those type of animals which are very small in nature firstly okay and they uh, you can say either they are depending on the other organism or you can say that they are residing on that particular organism for their food for example leeches leeches uh, you can say student even though the sometimes say in a here we are having leeches so that means those leeches are getting food from your body how they are getting so that's not the whole point here but they are taking food from your body so these are the very small organ animals which live on or inside the other animals and get their food from them so the those organisms are called as the parasites for example fleas leeches mosquitoes and bed bugs so that are the parasites and the scavengers fine students now okay that means after that uh, we have completed with our questions so students that means we have uh, we have completed with our session we have covered up all of the topics which we have to cover in the today's session we have discussed question now what the main thing is you have to watch the video with the great attention and it's just that if you are having any doubt any question is there you can post your question or your doubt on the public or private forum of ask guidance and you will be getting answer from the expert side definitely uh so till then study well and watch the session carefully and in the very last thank you so much for watching the session and keep learning from ask itians thank you uh -huh.